Today's unfortunate story is about a Joseph Paul Franklin, born James Clayton Vaughn Jr., April 3rd, 1950, who was an American serial killer, white supremacist, and domestic terrorist who engaged in a murder spree spanning the late 1970s and early 1980s. Franklin was convicted of several murders and received four life sentences, as well as two death sentences. He also confessed to the attempted murder of a magazine publisher and pornographer, Larry Flint, in the year of 1978, and civil rights activist Vernon Jordan in the year of 1980. Both survived the injuries, but Flint was left permanently paralyzed from the waist down. Franklin was not convicted in either of those highly publicized cases, and he made his confessions years later after the crimes had occurred. James Clayton Vaughn Jr. was born in Mobile, Alabama on April 13, 1950. The elder son of James Clayton Vaughn Sr. and Helen Ray Vaughn, he had two sisters and a brother. Vaughn's father was a World War II veteran and butcher who left the family when Vaughn was age eight. His sister, Caroline, recalled, Whenever Vaughn Sr. came to visit, he'd beat us. And their mother had Vaughn Sr. jailed twice for public drunkenness. Vaughn's mother was described by a family friend as a full-blooded German, a real straight perfectionist lady. I never saw her beat any of her children, but they told me stories. Vaughn later stated that he was rarely given enough to eat and suffered severe physical abuse as a child and that his mother didn't care about him and his siblings. He claimed that these factors stunted his emotional development and said that he would always had been last 10 years of more behind other people in their maturity. As early as high school, Vaughn developed an interest in evangelical Christianity, then in Nazism, and later had memberships in both the National Socialist White People's Party and the Ku Klux Klan. He eventually changed his name to Joseph Paul Franklin in honor of Paul Joseph, Goebbels, and Benjamin Franklin. In the 1960s, Franklin was inspired to start a race war after reading Adolf Hitler's I've Never Felt That Way About Any Other Book. He later reflected it was something weird about that book. In the early 1970s, he took a road trip to American Nazi Party conference in Virginia with David Duke, then a student, and Don Black. For much of his life, Franklin was a drifter, roaming the East Coast seeking chances to cleanse the world of people he considered inferior, especially black and Jewish people. His primary source of financial support appears to have been bank robberies. Franklin supplemented his income with criminal acts, with paid blood bank donations, which eventually led to his subsequent capture by the FBI. In May 29th, the year of 1980, Franklin confessed to shooting and seriously wounding civil rights activist and Urban League President Vernon Jordan after seeing him with a white woman in Fort Wayne, Indiana. June 8th, the year of 1980, Franklin killed cousins Daryl Lane and Dante Evans Brown in Cincinnati, Ohio, waiting on an overpass to shoot a racially mixed couple. He shot the boys instead, a crime to which he later confessed. June 15th, the year of 1980, Franklin shot and killed Arthur Smothers and Kathleen McCula with a high-powered rifle as the couple walked across the Washington Street Bridge in Johnston, Pennsylvania. June 25th, the year of 1980, Franklin used a 44 Ruger pistol to kill two hitchhikers, Nancy Saltomero and Vicky Durian, in Pocahontas County, West Virginia. In August 20th, the year of 1980, Franklin killed two black men, Ted Fields and David Martin, near Liberty Park, located in Salt Lake City, Utah. 
He was tried on the federal civil rights charges as well as state first degree murder charges. Following the two murderers in Utah, Franklin returned to Midwestern U.S., traveling through Kentucky. He was detained and questioned regarding a firearm that he was transporting in his car. Franklin fled from interrogation, but authorities recovered sufficient evidence from his vehicle to potentially link him to sniper killings. His conspicuous racist tattoos, coupled with the habit of visiting blood banks, led investigators to issue a nationwide alert to blood banks. In October the year of 1980, the tattoos drew the attention of a Florida blood bank worker who contracted the FBI. Franklin was arrested in Lakeland on October 28th, the year of 1980. In October the year 2013, victim Larry Flint called for clemency for Franklin, asserting that a government that forbids killing among its citizens should not be in the business of killing people itself. Franklin was held on death row at the Potosi Correctional Center near Mineral Point, Missouri in August year of 2013. The Missouri Supreme Court announced that Franklin would be executed on November 20th. Missouri Attorney General Chris Coster said in a statement that by setting execution dates, the state high court has taken an important step to see that justice is finally done for the victims and their families. Franklin's execution was affected by the European Union export ban when the German drug manufacturer Freemius Kabu was obligate, obliged to refuse having their drugs used for lethal injections. In response, Missouri announced that it would use for Franklin's execution a new method of lethal injection, which used a single drug provided by an unnamed compounding pharmacy. Franklin was executed at the Eastern Reception Diagnostic and Correctional Center in Bon Terry, Missouri. On November 20th, the year of 2013, the execution began at 6.07 a.m. Central Standard Time, and he was pronounced dead at 6.17 a.m. His execution was the first lethal injection in Missouri to use a drug called fentobitol, along inside of the conventional use of three drugs. An associate press agency reported that the five grams... 18 ounces of the barbiturate pentorbitrol was administered. Three media witnesses said Franklin did not seem to show pain. He did not make any final written statement and did not speak a word in the death chamber. After the injection, he blinked a few times, breathed heavily a few times, and swallowed hard. The witness said that the heaving and the heaving of his chest slowed and finally stopped, as they said. 